A lot of you have been asking about the shiny hunting locations for ice type Pokemon. And let me be honest with you, I understand why a lot of comments were asking. It is probably one of the most difficult Pokemon to solo hunt in this game. So in this video, we're going to be going over the best possible shiny hunting locations for them and shiny hunting methods in order to get the shiny ice type Pokemon that you want in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're going to start off this video by taking out Pokemon that are dual typing. The reason why we're going to be doing that is because it's going to help eliminate them from the ice table, which means we're going to be using different sandwiches in order to pull this off. On screen, I have thrown up a image of the sandwich recipes that I am currently using. There are tons of other ones on the internet, and I'm sure the comments will be filled with them as they are always. If you need to refer out to the other videos that I'm mentioning, please feel free to do that at any point. To skip Crabominable with the Fighting Ice type, the best thing to do is just pop a Fighting Sandwich and grab a Crab Brawler. That's really it. It's a Fighting type. The best spot I got it is on Lavincia Beach, and it's shiny. It's just going to be red. So just go to the beach by Lavincia, look around on there, despawn, respawn them out. And that should be a faster way of getting that to evolve into Crabominable, which is going to be your fighting ice type. And it's it's just, it's a lot better, right? Than just trying to go on a mountain and look for a Crabominable. This is a best way to isolate this out from your ice hunts and do it separately. So that's also covered in the fighting video. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It helps out a lot. And it means a lot to me that you guys are taking the time to watch my content. And I hope it really does help you. So for Sneasel and Weavile, you pretty much just have to pop a dark sandwich because they are dark ice types and it's a lot easier when you do that sandwich because it's going to separate them completely out from the other ice types and you'll only be getting those really spawning around in the area and simply all you're doing is looking for a shiny which is going to be a pink one and since you have that you don't have to worry about the other pokemon getting in your way so if you're specifically hunting that pop that nice dark sandwich and then you're going to just despawn respawn all these sneasels and weavile families in and out but depending on whatever spot you think is the best I just go around Snow Mountain. You can choose wherever you want to go to see them because they pretty much spawn everywhere when you have that dark ice type. And yeah, you'll be able to easily hunt it down. This is also covered in the dark video. If you go over to Puerto Marinada by the lighthouse, there's going to be a Rotom spot. We just talked about this in our last video, the electric one. And you're going to be able to catch a shiny Rotom in this area. And with that shiny Rotom, you're going to be able to get the frost Rotom by eventually using the specific item to do that and transform it into the ice type. And that's pretty much it. It. There's not really any footage too much on it, but here it is pretty much how you're going to get your Frost Rotom, which is a nice type as well. In our bug video, we talked about Snome and Frost Moth. So if you want to hunt those two, I suggest popping the bug sandwich because you don't have to deal with the other ice Pokemon. And because that is a bug ice Pokemon, it's pretty much going to separate it out. And you're going to head over to this location over here and just climb up and down this hill area. You're going to see a bunch of Snomes on the ground and their shinies are going to be listed right over here on the screen and that's going to be able to help you isolate those hunts out and make them a specific hunt versus all the other ones or the frigabax which is pretty much your dragon ice pseudo legendary you're gonna have to just pop a dragon sandwich because when you do that and you roam on the ice mountain that pokemon is going to be spawning everywhere no matter where you look you're gonna see frigabax just running around everywhere and the best thing to do is just keep walking until you spot it and pay attention to the little tassels on it. Here's the shiny of what it looks like. And uh, we cover this more in the dragon video. But if you want to isolate that specific dragon ice Pokemon, that is the way to do it. You're going to have to pop a dragon sandwich. For your Snover and Abomna Snow, this one is going to be very important to use the Grass Sandwich. The reason why is because Grass will help remove the other spawns around it. That way you'll be getting majority Snovers and Abomna Snows spawning around the area. So you can just walk around the Ice Mountain, get those Pokemon to spawn, pay attention to the arms. It is a lot more blue. They have blue marks on them as opposed to the green. And that's how you'll be able to identify that shiny. And that way you can separate it out and hunt your other Ice Pokemon separately from this one so these methods are pretty much all you're going to be using to get the different pokemon spawns separated from the ice ones that we'll be covering in this video now if you want to isolate or solo hunt just delibird i suggest popping a flying sandwich up here it's pretty much delibird everywhere on the ice mountain 
it takes over the ice spawns pretty much and that was the highest peak point in the game and pretty much mostly everywhere you go you're going to find deli bird so that's how you're going to separate deli bird as a hunt from everything else and of course the deli bird hunt is going to be purple uh, the shiny so good luck with that if you want to separate it out from everything else so this is going to be a really fun cloister spot to hunt. It's going to be in Porto Marinanda. And what you're going to do is you're going to head to this gray dock area and just jump right off. Now, by you jumping off here, it's going to turn into a town spawn. So it's going to make hunting cloister very fun and easy. So if I just back up a little bit like this, there, I'm back in the town. I move forward like this. I'm out in the sea. And what you do is you just literally stand here, watch all like 20 cloisters start to spawn and they're all going to start to surface. You can identify pretty much if the shiny's there because it's going to be a much more blue color and when it does pop up and you're pretty sure what color it is you're gonna know and it's gonna be time to get that shiny quick and just make sure to you know you're panning around sometimes they'll go behind you so you want to be careful of that in the case that they do go behind you you want to throw out your pokemon but uh yeah just back up into town like that you're gonna despawn come back again was pal d and c they're all gonna start to spawn again <laughs> and uh yeah i think this is a really fun uh, area to hunt and you'll get used to what is a purple color versus a blue color the moment you see the shiny pop up in the water so good luck with this hunt this is a very fun spot and i'm sure you guys will be able to get cloister and this ice sandwich is going to be good to separate these cloisters from a bunch of other water pokemon that spawn in this area okay so this is a very good way to solo hunt snow run now snow run is going to be a very good one to hunt because it's shiny is going to be a nice light blue color and snow runt if it's a male can become glalie or female can become glalies but if you have a female and you give it the dawn stone it'll become frost last so hunting these is going to be a lot easier than trying to hunt down a glalie or a frost last solo and these things are everywhere in this entire passageway in these caves and, and pretty much everywhere you go so you can see a whole group of them over here if i walk into this little cave over here i'll, I'll get a whole nother despawn out over there and i can walk back out here and then i get all my spawns again right they're all just spawning i'll get a whole nother group if you climb around this area you'll get more of them spawning on the hills i can walk into here and you'll get even more showing up so these guys will just constantly just spawn in all these areas where there's caves. So anywhere there is caves around the ice areas, this is pretty much your hunting spot for them. Now you can go in and out of these caves just to constantly respawn. You also climb up these mountains. You'll find them over here on this path. There's just so many places where you can find snow runs. And I think that's the that's the fun part about hunting this Pokemon. It's just they're everywhere. There's groups and families everywhere in here. Any little hole or pathway you find and drop down it. Yep, you're going to find a snow run. If I see a little cave like this, I walk in it. There's another snow run. If I drop down, oh, look at that. A, a whole passageway of snow runs. So have fun hunting snow run in here. If you head over to Casaroya Lake and start to look around this area, specifically heading towards the ice mountain, you're going to notice that there's going to be a lot of Avalug and Bergmites in the water. And if it's a shiny, you're going to notice the yellow ones. And when it comes to the Bergmites, you're going to notice the same thing when you look at them. So if I if I was to just show you that Bergmite, you're going to notice much more yellow eyes, like a very lighter yellow and the base of it's going to be yellow as well. So that's how you're going to be able to tell the difference in these shinies. Now, the cool part is you're going to be getting no other types of Pokemon in this area. Oh, when you go to this specific side of the lake and you head towards that mountain. So wherever you spawn and walk around, you're just going to see Bergmites everywhere and Avalugs. That's pretty much it. So just you have to pay attention to their body. You have to see what they are. Are they going to have the lines? Is it a purple lines? OK, it is. So I keep moving on and you can easily despawn and respawn the groups that do spawn spawn out so you can either swim away from them the cool part is when you have the ice sandwich and you go on this body of land you should also get some spawns up here that's the cool part so the ice takes over this area that is much closer so you know you're going to get them by looking at the mountain and and seeing exactly what is going to be spawning around it so i just go ahead i look here and you can keep going back and forth and that's how you solo target or isolate out the bergmites and avalugs from the other ice pokemon in this game when it comes to going on that ice mountain because it is chaotic with how many ice pokemon are in this game so this is a great way if you are solo hunting this so good luck in casa Royal lake if you have been following this series you're gonna know about the zappa pico trick this is gonna be at zappa pico west and it's a town spot as well so when you step out of here it's gonna be the glaciata mountain you can see start to snow and in front of me you can see a pokemon that a lot of you guys have requested we do this ice video for for satoddle and satitan pretty much and now
Now, this area is going to be, obviously, a lot of other different Pokemon spawning, but I've noticed a very high success rate in getting Satados to show up more often in this area. And they're very, very noticeable compared to the other Pokemon. Now, you need to just be slightly aware that, hey, if you're exploring around this area, yeah, there could be a chance of another shiny Pokemon showing up that's ice. So just keep your eyes peeled. If it's a Weavile, look around for the pink ones. If it's going to be your Snomes on the floor, just look for the green little face on it. And same thing for the Snow Runs, look for the light blue. But majorly, you should be paying attention to your Satados here. Satados are going to be big and important to look at because they're going to be nice and gray. And it's probably one of the coolest shinies in this gen. A very cool shiny. So you can see like there's just groups of them spawning here. There they are. I just love how they just show up, these little groups. And I just walk away from them. Now, you can do the simple town reset method, but you don't know if you're always going to get the Satados to show up there. But this is a great spot to hunt them down. Uh, as you can just see, they're just everywhere here. They just keep spawning in every single time. And uh, you can do this until you get a shiny. Now, just keep in mind, you will find them everywhere in this game. The higher up you go, you're going to find more of them. But just realize, the closer you go to the Snow Mountain, the more different spawns you get, which means the less Satados you're going to find as often. So if you have a better spot, please let everyone know down in the comments. But I do like this spot because they're so obvious to see against the green grass. And it just makes hunting this like, look at that. It just makes it so much easier. All right, there you go. Good luck getting your Satados. There's going to be other Pokemon we're going to be talking about, like Cub Chew and Bear Trick and Glaceon, as well as Glalie. Now, we're not really going to care too much about Frostlass in this video because Frostlass is also a ghost type. So we're going to leave that for another video. But while we're here, there are Glalies. You can see we are talking about these bears. And I've noticed you get good family spawns if you do a nice rotation in this area. Now, the bears are going to be obvious because their shinies are pretty much going to be a pink color. A Glaceon shiny is going to be listed here on the screen so you can tell the difference between the regular one and the non-shiny. And Glalie is going to have clear red eyes, which will really distinguish it from the regular one. And by the way, if you do have frost lasses that show up, <laughs> it is a purple tassel. And since any shiny Pokemon's here, I'm just throw them on the screen. We also have Frost Moth here. I'll throw that up on the screen too. Now, a nice pathway that you could do from this location, which I will open up for you so you guys can see. We are at the top area of this ice mountain, pretty much where the grass area is. And this little route is a lot of fun. But what we're essentially going to do here is we're just going to burst our way around this mountain like this. So we're going to go from the bottom, work our way up. You're going to see a whole entire family spawn here. What you're going to do is you could cut left here. This is a little fun. You, you get some different spawns of other Pokemon as well, but you'll notice you get your bears showing up. You'll get Glalies showing up. These guys are just spawning in everywhere I go. This one has Frost Moth too. There's a little Sneasel Weavile family. And here's another bear family. So what I do is I, I reach the end, make sure they're a little bit despawned out. And then I re circle around. Now, the reason why I grouped these Pokemon is because it's not easy to solo hunt them. Now, I, of course, the snow run I mentioned can be done and you can evolve that snow run into Glalie. So you don't really have to care too much. But if you're just, you know, running around this area trying to find a nice Cub Chew Bear trick, it's a pretty decent spot as well. You'll notice the majority of Pokemon that do spawn when we are doing this method around this area. Like you, Glalies are clearly the number one Pokemon. And then you can see we have our Glaceons as well. Oh, Glaceons, slow down, slow down. Yeah, you can see your Glaceon spawning, your Bear Tricks. It's just, it's just nonstop. So you're going to be basically doing exactly what I'm doing. Run around these pathways. And if you want to explore a little further out, you can just run across this whole bottom mountain area. You don't have to make that left. You can just go, like, you can see how many bears we're getting here. Run across this area. There's a lot of stuff you can do on this snow mountain, especially in this spot where it's a lot more open and Pokemon just spawn without, you know, you having to slow down. So I feel that's pretty good when it comes to these. And family spawns are the best because you can run as fast as you want to hunt them down. For Cryogonal, the best spot that you'll probably be able to get them to spawn will be around here. So I, so I, I came over to the Glaciato Gym area and right from here, I can find them probably in this pathway here in between this big mountain. There's a peak as well up there that you can find them, but yeah, you can find them here. And the shiny is pretty much gonna have an orange glow on the eyes. It's gonna look a lot more bluer than that okay so yeah you can see them as you climb up these mountains in this area pretty much around the gym area behind the gym in these little pathways here and they're gonna find them also at the tallest 
peak in the area and you can see it up here as well on this peak here there's another one over here so pretty much running from up here behind that gym in this little pathway there that's where you're pretty much going to be finding your cryogonals and you're going to be looking for the shiny specifically like i mentioned it's going to be a lot more lighter blue you're going to see the eyes and they're going to look orange and not be glowing this blue color the problem when you're shiny hunting ice pokemon is that just so many different ice pokemon will spawn and you'll most likely bump into an ice pokemon you're not even hunting but that is the best i can help you guys with when it comes to specifically cryogonals and where they start to show up on the mountain if you have a better spot that you'd like to list out for cryogonal please share with the community and i'll pin it so if you are a pokemon violet player what you're going to be doing is heading over to the north province area three and heading towards this beach area now for scarlet players you won't be getting ice cube here you'll just be getting a bunch of cloisters but for violet players my favorite thing to do when it comes to hunting ice cube is pretty much hang around this area right here so i kind of move in towards this inlet area and after that i'm i'm pretty much done you also want to keep an eye on the cloisters because that is an ice type so you can check out if you're getting a blue color or not for the ice cubes you're just looking for pink what i like to do is i see a bunch of them you know i walk by them i despawn a whole group of them out and there's quite a bit of them that do show up so the, the best thing to do is just despawn them out and then once you have a group of them all despawn just head back in the water again they're all going to start respawning and you can do your rounds again in that little area so just circle around this rock despawn these ice cubes out and eventually you will happen to bump into a pink ice cube or if you're in a scarlet game you'll have a cloister just come out of the water in this area but violet players can also have access to this so really this is a, a hot spot for ice cube especially this little inlet area here so good luck getting your ice cube so this is going to be an exclusive hunt for pokemon violet players in area zero you just have to come to research station number four and as usual this is my favorite spot to do this trick on you're just gonna jump off this cliff and head right to that diamond spot right there easy right from research station number four and then once you land there we're gonna do the entire refresh trick on top of this rock you don't even have to really jump on it and you're gonna be looking for an iron bundle that pretty much is devoid of oh 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 he's gone <laughs> that's it oh oh we oh they're oh no they're just <laughs> Oh no! Okay, well, hopefully a shiny doesn't spawn there. But pretty much, you're just gonna walk up to here. They're all gonna spawn up there. You're gonna look for the one with no color. Back up, despawn them out, and then uh, come forward. I can't believe they're falling. Hopefully, there. Yep, there's a there's a falling spot for them. Walk up to the rock, and then they're all just gonna spawn in over there. And uh, once they all get in there, wait for a sec and back up and before you know it you're eventually going to have your shiny iron bundle in your hands if you're a pokemon violet player and if you're a very nice pokemon violet player you'll be you'll be nice and trade this to your pokemon scarlet friend right because you're a nice person i believe now it is going to be very difficult to get a lot of these ice pokemon so another trick that we're going to be using is the simple day skip mass outbreak method which means if you place your character in an area where these pokemon naturally spawn then we're going to be able to start date skipping so one make sure you have your sandwich all ready to go two we're then going to open up our map that way we can see the entire pokemon that do spawn and then we're going to go into our settings and start date skipping and as we are date skipping you can see the different pokemon showing up on our mass outbreak map you can see most of the pokemon that we have talked about in this video showing up at their mass outbreaks and by doing these mass outbreaks i traveled over to them and i was able to start hunting down i caught a frost last in the frost last mass outbreak i caught two deli birds in the deli bird mass outbreak which is a flying ice type and i just decided to go there because it was showing up on the ice type i also was able to get a cub chew when i was hunting because they are spawning around the area during my hunts i also was able to get a cryogonal outbreak and because there were so little spawns when we talked about their original area the mass outbreak actually was in that exact same spot that i was talking about earlier and just a lot more and we were able to get a cryogonal so mass outbreak sandwich resetting might be the best way to do it which means you're just date skipping and like i mentioned and if you don't like date skipping just be the night before 11 59 eat your sandwich and wait for the clock to strike midnight and that's going to be the ice pokemon that you will choose to hunt during that day because i want everyone to enjoy you want to play the game that way there's your way of doing it if you want to play the game by doing date skipping there is also the other way of doing it and you can hunt all these ice pokemon it'll be very efficient for you and you should be able to get the ice the specific ice pokemon that you want if you enjoyed this video make sure to check out this one and you might be able to catch a lot of other shiny pokemon i'm serious we get a lot of shiny pokemon in these videos like it